We're here on the John Kaufman farm and we're putting in a waterway. We've been running this farm for uh, three or four years now. There's been an erosion problem on this piece of ground. There's about 45 acres here, but south of here there's a lot of land that comes together and it's been coming down through here and kind of terrorizing things over the winter. You'll get ruts, oh, a foot, maybe two feet deep, zigzagged across this ground. So we uh, had Don Steiner come out. That's our excavator that does tiling and grading and stuff for us. Look it over and he came up with the design. Uh, John, the landowner, gave us a go ahead. So uh, Don started two days ago with the grading and finished yesterday. Um, this morning we took the harrogator and uh, used that to work the ground. Just want to get that stirred up a little bit so you have good seed soil contact. And then we put on a mix of uh, ryegrass, perennial ryegrass fescue, and some fertilizer and pelletized lime after that. Uh, the object is to have about a 30 foot wide waterway. We're putting down two 10 foot uh, widths of what's called Curlex. That's a straw blanket with uh, nylon fibers to hold it together. And that's very important to have that. If you don't, your waterway won't be successful. That helps hold moisture, hold the seed and fertilizer in place in case you get a rain event. Um, I alluded to that video years or video. months ago. Um, you can have a heavy rain after you get this done and it'll still hold the material and it'll still grow. So what we're doing today is we want to get it covered up. They're calling for rain this weekend. It's important as soon as you get it graded to get it worked, seeded, and covered. Otherwise, you'll get rain come in here and you'll wash all your loose dirt off and you got to start over. And it might even cause some erosion that has to be repaired. So that's our job today. We've got, what did you say, Ben, 15 rolls? 15 rolls to do. It's right after lunch here. We put down six this morning in addition to the, the soil work and fertilizing. So we got a big afternoon ahead of us. It's 85 degrees and it's hot. So enjoy the video. We're using a couple of different techniques today. We've got different staples. Today we've got uh, a round headed staple and a magnet on the end of a stick that you can stick them with. The other staple we've used in the past is a horseshoe and you have to bend over and shove each one in and pound them. So the, I'm about 30 years older than I was the last time we did a lot of this. So appreciate not even have to bend over for every staple and we don't have all those little kids running around like when Ben was about six seven years old when we did the last one so enjoy the video and we will start sweating for you We have here are these sticks. This is actually a magnet I had and a broom handle dad had that one we actually borrowed from Don Steiner, the one dad's using. And you have these round, I guess you'd call them staples, and you magnet them to the bottom of there and you punch them in. Now sometimes you find a rock and you might bend them and then you gotta pull them out, straighten them, and go back in, but it beats getting up and down a million times throughout the day. This is, I think about 800 feet is what this waterway is gonna be. This, so, fabric, this fabric is 10 feet wide. We overlap in the center, six to 12 inches. You stitch it in the center with a row and those are spaced about two feet apart because you wanna keep it from coming apart. Then there's two more rows divided in thirds, two more rows at three foot spacing staples and uh we've found today these nail aprons don this is for you 
these nail aprons work really nice. If you put five bundles, each guy takes five bundles and puts them in your nail apron, you can hammer out uh, two rolls, 200 foot rolls, and have enough. Like he said, you know when you hit a rock, it bends them. But it beats bending over and shoving them like we did before. So, I don't know. I think it's a win. I like them. Don said some people don't. Don said some people don't. But uh, I think I like them. But anyway. Yep, we're getting there. Now we're up to 10 rolls. So, I guess we'll move the truck. Well, I'm not sure if it caught it. Uh, camera turned off, said it got too hot. But what we did is we cut and folded this over itself here. You can see that bunch right there. And then again on the other side there. And then also right here and here. And we did that to kind of negotiate our turn here. And it worked out pretty nicely. So we're nearing the end here. Slowly but surely, we're getting her done here. So we're gonna set off a couple more rolls here and finish this up. And probably next time I turn this thing back on, this will all be buttoned up and done. Well, we made it to the end. Just got done putting the last couple staples in down here. So runs clear from that end. Down makes a bend, straightens in between the fields there, and then makes another 90 and heads on down to an existing waterway down there. But we got a little bit of curl X left here, so we're gonna actually take it down there to the end of that 90 over there and put some of it down there to try to help for any potential erosion while this is establishing its uh, footing with the seating here. So once we do that, we'll pack up and get out of here and this job will be done. Well, he's headed home to put away tools and stuff and I'm gonna head off and disc a field, but just wanted to show this is the last little bit here we did. I said we had some Curl X left over when we were down there, so we just brought it over here and, and put it in for some erosion control here. But this is how it turned out. Turned out pretty nice. Runs down there to an existing waterway that's already in place. This place needed a little bit of water control in it. I think that this will definitely help. So, yeah, turned out nice. So, I'm gonna go get busy. We'll catch up with you guys after a bit. Well morning everybody, 
today we're gonna do some field work. I dissed that one field yesterday afternoon and got it ready. So now I got the 1066 and the Collie Monster Dad hooked up while I was disking yesterday. We're gonna go fit a field and put a hay seating in today. Finally got some nice dry weather here. We'll see how long it lasts. Take the transport pin out. This pin is in place, so when the machine is off, there's no hydraulic pressure going to it. Keeps the thing from settling back down to the ground, also, just like it says, transport pin. So when you're going between farms or between fields, it doesn't fall down and do something like tear up a road or make a mess for you. Well, this is the first day that we've been able to plant this spring. We're going to put in our hay seeding today and possibly tomorrow, the last field. This is our setup here. We've got a herd seeder on the front. This year we're using a tetraploidal perennial ryegrass instead of orchard grass. We're going to try something new. It's supposed to be a little better digestibility and doesn't go to straw quite as fast as orchard grass does. 750 no-till drill. This is the narrow one here, the 10-footer. It has a alfalfa grass box here on the front. Alfalfa seed in there, peas and oats in the big box. The peas and oats are dropped through the opener drop tubes at inch and a half. Alfalfa has to be planted a quarter to half an inch, so we're dropping that on top. The drop tubes are pulled out. You'll see that it's just going to sprinkle it on top of the ground here. And uh, what we're going to do is roll it when we're done with the call packer, pull the teeth up so we don't bury it. And this is something new this year. Put that plank on the front. It was awfully hard to put seed in that box. Had to get up on top on your knees, and that was kind of painful. My father-in-law was always after me to do that. So this year, I finally decided we're going to try that. And I really like that. That plank worked pretty nice. So we're going to the field now, and uh, we'll get started.
coverage and everything. Everything seems to be going good, so full speed ahead. check and see what the situation is here looks like we could make another run but I'm off the tractor so I'm gonna go ahead and pull her up is definitely an upgrade used to have to throw on top of this thing on your knees on this lid here and that bolt right there you hit that with your kneecap oh that hurts well I got done getting across that with the collie mulcher once this morning dad's part way across with the uh, 750 drill and uh, I'm just now crawling up in her 3588 and ate a quick lunch. I'm gonna take this over and disc what I chiseled the other day of snurs. So, I'll catch up with you guys when I get over there.
property. Disc in a three cornered field that my chisel plowed the other day. We're gonna seed this to hay. This field has a couple wet springs in it. And so the other day I came over here and chiseled the ground, tried to break it up a little bit. Get that dirt up on top, try to get it to dry out some. It's it worked pretty good. I mean it's still a little doughy in a couple places, but we've had kind of a, a cold wet spring here, so gotta get the ball rolling somewhere. So we started on our hay fields here and after that we'll probably move on to getting some of our no no-till corn in the ground. But this field is like I said three-cornered, it has lots of point rows and so See the plow ground's kind of rough, so I'm just taking the time, going kind of slow. Don't want to beat my equipment up too bad. This tractor's pretty handy to have. These big tires sure make it a lot nicer for going over chisel plow ground. You mechanical front wheel assist guys will know what I'm talking about when I talk about having the big tall tires. It sure, sure helps out. We're gonna get this disc up and head back home and. We'll call him mulch that field for the second time and set the hay seed over there. Might possibly get back to this today yet. It's a beautiful day. So, I'll make something happen with it.
now dad's relieving me he's gonna finish rolling this field here i was almost done but gonna finish rolling this and then we got one over there at snurs but we have a tractor the ac doesn't work in it's like 85 degrees and i have a bunch of chisel plowing to do using that tractor <laughs> so i think i'm gonna go ahead and get my ac equipment out and evac that system and vacuum it out and see if it holds pressure it did last year i just couldn't get it to take any free on last year but we'll try it again we'll be optimistic that i might have a different outcome this time but we're gonna go grab that tractor and see what we can make happen maybe we can have some lukewarm air conditioning tomorrow we'll see <laughs> 